Section 1 of Selected Letters of Beethoven. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Robert Scott. Selected Letters, Number 4 and 5, by Ludwig von Beethoven as compiled and with footnotes by Dr. Ludwig Knoll, and translated by Lady Grace Wallace. Letter number four. To Eleanor von Brunig, Bonn. Vienna, November 2, 1793. My highly esteemed Eleanor, my dearest friend, a year of my stay in this capital has nearly elapsed before you receive a letter from me and yet the most vivid remembrance of you is ever present with me. I have often conversed in thought with you and your dear family, though not always in the happy mood I could have wished, for that fatal misunderstanding still hovered before me, and my conduct at that time is now hateful in my sight. But so it was, and how much would I give to have the power wholly to obliterate from my life a mode of acting so degrading to myself and so contrary to the usual tenor of my character. Many circumstances indeed contributed to estrange us, and I suspect that those talebearers who repeated alternately to you and to me our mutual expressions were the chief obstacles to any good understanding between us. Each believed that what was said proceeded from deliberate conviction, whereas it arose only from anger, fanned by others, so we were both mistaken. Your good and noble disposition, my dear friend, is sufficient security that you have long since forgiven me. We are told that the best proof of sincere contrition is to acknowledge our faults. And this is what I wish to do. Let us now draw a veil over the whole affair, learning one lesson from it, that when friends are at variance, it is always better to employ no mediator, but to communicate directly with each other. With this you will receive a dedication from me, the variations on Seville Belair. My sole wish is that the work were greater and more worthy of you. I was applied to here publish this little work, and I take advantage of the opportunity, my beloved Eleanor, to give you a proof of my regard and friendship for yourself and also a token of my endearing remembrance of your family. Pray, then, accept this trifle, and do not forget that it is offered by a devoted friend. Oh, if it only gives you pleasure, my wish will be fulfilled. May it in some degree recall the time when I passed so many happy hours in your house. Perhaps it may serve to remind you of me till I return, though this is indeed a distant prospect. Oh, how we shall then rejoice together, my dear Eleanor! You will, I trust, find your friend a happier man, all former forbidding, careworn furrows smoothed away by time and better fortune. When you see B. Koch, note, subsequently, Countess Belderbush, pray say that it is unkind in her never once to have written to me. I wrote to her twice and three times to Malchus. Note, afterwards, Westphalian Minister of Finance. But no answer. Tell her that if she does not choose to write herself, I beg that she will at least urge Malchus to do so. At the close of my letter, I venture to make one more request. I am anxious to be so fortunate as again to possess an Angola waistcoat knitted by your hand, my dear friend. Forgive my indiscreet request. It proceeds from my great love 
for all that comes from you. And I may privately admit that a little vanity is connected with it. Namely, that I may say, I possess something from the best and most admired young lady in Bonn. I still have the one you were so good as to give me in Bonn. But change of fashion has made it look so antiquated that I can only treasure it in my wardrobe as your gift, and thus still very dear to me. You would make me very happy by soon writing me a letter. If mine causes you any pleasure, I promise you to do as you wish, and write as often as it lies in my power. Indeed, everything is acceptable to me that can serve to show you how truly I am your admiring and sincere friend. L. V. Beethoven P.S. The variations are rather difficult to play, especially the shake in the coda. But do not be alarmed at this, being so contrived that you only require to play the shake and leave out the other notes, which also occur in the violin part. I never would have written it in this way had I not occasionally observed that there was a certain individual in Vienna who, when I extemporized the previous evening, not unfrequently wrote down the next day many of the peculiarities of my music, adopting them as his own. For instance, the Abigailinic. Concluding, therefore, that some of these things would soon appear, I resolved to anticipate this. Another reason also was to puzzle some of the piano fort teachers here, many of whom are my mortal foes. So I wish to revenge myself on them in this way, knowing that they would occasionally be asked to play the variations when these gentlemen would not appear to much advantage. Beethoven End of letter number four Letter number five to Eleanor Van Brunig, Bonn. The beautiful neckcloth embroidered by your own hand was the greatest possible surprise to me, yet welcome as the gift was, it awakened within me feelings of sadness. Its effect was to recall former days and put me to shame by your noble conduct to me. I indeed need little thought that you still consider me worthy of your remembrance. Oh, if you could have witnessed my emotions yesterday when this incident occurred, you would not think that I exaggerate in saying that such a token of your recollection brought tears to my eyes and made me feel very sad. Little as I may deserve favor in your eyes, believe me, my dear friend, let me call you so. I have suffered and still suffer severely from the privation of your friendship. Never can I forget you and your dear mother. You were so kind to me that your loss neither can nor will be easily replaced. I know what I have forfeited and what you were to me. But in order to fill up this blank, I must recur to scenes equally painful for you to hear and for me to detail. As a slight requital of your kind souvenir, I take the liberty to send you some variations and a rondo with violin accompaniment. I have a great deal to do, or I would long since have transcribed the sonata I promised you. It is as yet a mere sketch in manuscript, and to copy it would be a difficult task, even for the clever and practiced Paraquin. Note, counterbass in the electoral orchestra. You can have the rondo copied and return the score. What I now send is the only one of my works at all suitable for you. Besides, as you are going to Kirpin, note, where my uncle of the family lived, I thought these trifles might cause you pleasure. Farewell, my friend, for it is impossible for me to give you any other name. However indifferent I may be to you, believe me, 
I shall ever continue to revere you and your mother as I have always done. If I can in any way contribute to the fulfillment of a wish of yours, do not fail to let me know for I have no other means of testifying my gratitude for past friendship. I wish you an agreeable journey, and that your dear mother may return entirely restored to health. Think sometimes of your affectionate friend, Beethoven. End of letter number five. End of section one of selected letters of Beethoven as compiled and with footnotes by Dr. Ludwig Knoll and translated by Lady Grace Wallace. Recording by Robert Scott, June the 20th, 2007.